vi kunde ha liksom, helt plötsligt har vi tre kameror. <laughs> det där blir ju inte så snyggt med datorerna va, men skitsamma, nästa kamera kommer sitta här uppe. Ja. Okej, okay, start recording. Välkommen till Puttas och Davids Corner! Magic Corner. Ska vi... så? Hello Patrick, welcome! You're sitting here together with me, David, in uh, Walk Their Shoes podcast. How does yeah. it feel to be here? This is my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it feels yes. great. I That's think this is some kind of new uh, exploration we're doing today mm. with a new set of uh, equipment for putting together uh, some kind of series. Mm. I would say so, where we'll be trying to interview interesting people, um, you know, everything from entrepreneurs to people who have made it in their fields in life and, and just see what what their life has been like, how did they un- end up where they are um, and try to learn something from them, I suppose. Sounds good. Yeah. Could you please check that the, the mics are picking up on the sound in a decent manner? Yeah. Let's check because my mic is I think, yeah, you bouncing have to sit very somewhere co- there and what about yours? I think it looks okay, but when you're leaning back... And I think you sound more me. sexy than me now. Oh, stop it now. Okay, Patrick, so you're originally from Helsinki. Um, you grew up there, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, correct. And you came to Sweden when you were how old? 26, I think. Yeah. As a professional soccer player. Yeah playing for so you came to sweden to play soccer in one of the top divisions was it the the top division or one of the top divisions yeah we uh i came to sundsvall to give sundsvall and uh, we uh the team has just fell down from the highest league all right so, so when uh, you played it was in the highest league yeah no we ju- we we picked up the team to the highest le- uh, league when i came and uh, cool. yeah uh Played with some really good players, Emil Forsberg and uh, and some other guys who were. Uh, That's pretty cool. Which yeah. today are on the Swedish yeah, national, national team, team, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a great journey there. And then uh, the second year, of course, we played mm-hmm. in the highest league, and. It's uh, really cool. Yeah. Any good stories? Any dirt on those players that you can share? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen all of them naked in the shower, <laughs> but <laughs> but good. no, no, yeah, I, okay. my, maybe the. Yeah, I have some funny things, you know, when Kevin Walker won Idol mm. and we were uh, like uh, joking in the shower with him like uh, half a year before that, like he, he, I want to do music and I said to him, yeah, yeah, come to my place, let's do some music. I, I've done it with my computer a little bit and we did it like, so we, we had a little band together in the team and then uh, like the Idol program uh, took away our lead singer and <laughs> <laughs> he became a fucking star. <laughs> I don't okay. It's crazy. Yeah, okay. So yeah. he, I, I don't know about this guy, but he was an idol, Swedish idol. Yeah, Kevin okay. Walker won the f- Swedish idol. Hell, I've been missing out on yeah, regular TV. It was like 2012 or 13. Yeah. You still in contact? Or is he too yeah, big a star I, now? Yeah, I write to him sometimes, but he... I, I'm, <laughs> he I'm doesn't saying, respond. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is, I'm like writing... Hey, we have a band uh, training session today. <laughs> of course, <laughs> I'm joking with up. him. Yeah, okay. But I have some dirt on him. I know he wants to do some uh, R&B stuff instead of that uh, All right. classical... Uh, Shit that he's doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. he's, he's good. He's talented, really talented. And he got, he's, he got the music in his blood. Yeah. He from uh, Ireland and stuff. Ah, uh, okay, family, cool. So. Yeah. But okay, Patrick. So you um, you came to Sweden playing professional soccer. What what was it like to move to a new country, playing professional soccer, which I suppose is a dream for for many guys, right? To play in the highest division in Sweden. Mm. Like how how were those years? What what was it like to be a professional football player and also in a new country then? So uh, for me, of course, as you said, it's like uh, fulfilling your dreams as a kid. But uh, then in a big picture, it beca- becomes your job, of course. Mm. So you have to uh, live like a sportsman 24 hours a day. And what and does that mean? Does it mean like, you know, certain types of exercise every day, certain type of diet, certain type of, I don't know, yeah. things you can't do? 
yeah party yeah less partying i mean you can party but then when you get to the highest leagues everybody knows in the seat or everybody but so many people know who you are and you you know mm. fans are or <laughs> in the club also i mean mm. you get busted quite quickly mm. like uh like when you go for a training camp somewhere and then somebody writes in the forum hey i saw him in the mcdonald's eating a big mac he ha- that's yeah. not a sportsman no. you know this, this is there's right. so much ridiculous stuff of mm. course uh but living the life of a sportsman yeah the food uh, sleeping uh, the maintaining your body mm. I'm, i mean it's like uh, recovery is the thing so but you you say something interesting is there is there equal pressure uh not only to be fit and and to perform but actually what people's perception about you will be yeah yeah definitely so uh it depends on a little bit of the country and the culture so some some Mm. places are much harder than other ones where you you don't have like the chance to take a big mac even Mm. (laughs) you know it's but uh yeah it's uh what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Just testing out. Here. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving to new country, playing football. Um, so why did you stop playing professional soccer? Was there something that you know? Was there an injury, or if I may ask, was there was there a reason you just felt done with it, or? I haven't stopped yet. <laughs> yeah, so you're still professional. You're playing for uh, the Swedish court, yeah. right? Yeah. I play in the lowest league now. Yeah. But actually, that was the case. I didn't like. I think it was mentally also a hard thing to say. Now I'm now I'm going to quit. Mm-hmm. So I didn't actually quit. And I had some Finnish journalists calling me. Hey, what's happening? Where are you? What are you doing? Mm. And uh, I was like, yeah. Nothing. I have some things here in Gothenburg, and my wife was following like my career a couple mm. of steps. Then I went from Sweden to Bulgaria and played there in the highest league, and uh, um, went back to Finland and played there in the highest league. And I mean, it was a little bit uncertain where you are. Like yeah. after one year or two year contracts, it's always it's uh, a weird life. It's, it's a little bit weird, yeah. Mm. But then uh, I think we. S- my wife settled down she was living in stockholm and then she found a job in gothenburg and i just decided to go after her and uh, mm. got a real interesting opportunity to do some business around some sport equipment stuff mm. and mm. Uh, represent the brand she and shows uh, love <coughs> before the sport right yeah yeah but i mean i got a chance to do something else and uh, then it's always this kind of hustle when you have some agents saying hey here's a team and here's the of course if i would have been a player who scored like 10 goals uh season and stuff like this you would be having uh teams knocking on your door but uh, mm. there are not many players who who mm. are fortunate to have that so i was a uh, right wing back uh really near to be in the national team and this stuff but still i have to you know fight for each contract mm. so it's a uh, it's a hard game. I mean, uh, uh, if I could have chosen to which team I go, it would have been maybe easier for me to continue. Mm-hmm. But I got a real good offer to change paths in uh, mm. in uh, my career, and and I just jump on another thing. Yeah. And then I left football, and then two years passed, and I was like, okay, I think I have quit football. <laughs> <laughs> you realize it. Yeah. Years, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. That's, that's a really interesting story, I think. And first of all, it's interesting, um, despite there's so much talent out there, but there's so few who can make enough bucks, I suppose, to not only play football for their lives so, and then be done with it, but actually people have to come up with something else, uh, mm-hmm. what they're going to do after their career in yeah. sports, right? Um, but you took a bit, I mean, you worked with business first, but then today you're actually working as a designer developer. Mm. And you, I wouldn't f- consider, you know, um, here we have a soccer player. He's playing in the highest league. Um, he's going to become a very good developer. Mm. It seems, I want to say contradictory, but it seems like a very different choice. Mm. Um, yeah. Would you say, are you the, the only former pro so- soccer player who became a, a software developer? Or No, there are many. But... Uh, 
many times I think sport people maybe end up more towards like a sales job or something like this because they have maybe they are already known persons but also they have maybe this uh, easy way to handle people I don't know mm. a uh, go-getter mentality yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> but for me it was actually during the final years of my football career I was also getting into web development instead of playing PlayStation <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we did this music thing also these stuff small stuff you know you got I've been always interested in the computers mm. so it's been uh, something I did and then I think because uh, I jumped on this path on representing a brand and bringing it to uh, to Nordics uh, there was a big need mm. for e-commerce, uh, digital marketing, and uh, it was really natural to get into those things, mm. even in in that path. So it's been following me all the time. And then uh, one year, uh, some years after after I then decided to do uh, uh, something about it and took mm. a degree in uh, mobile development. Yeah. So, would you say that? Um, because of course we work a lot with startups um, and you often hear uh, you know it's funny when you go for job applications or when you I suppose look for for people to to work with you look for that winner mentality that's something you hear a lot mm. it can sound a bit cheesy but uh, I suppose it's it's something people look uh, for that you have someone who's ready to go the extra mile mm. when you work with them yeah do you think that's something that uh, you know having this background in professional soccer is that something that's mm. applicable then um, in your daily work working with startups or mm. is that something you st- taught you other skills is not so relevant or are they yeah. is it something you bring with you in your daily job well I don't know any science about it but I think it's maybe one of the hardest things to become a soccer professional in Europe I if you just calculate like uh, how many juniors you have in one uh, one year's mm. uh, what do you call it a year uh, yeah. uh, youth team and then you have 20 years of youth teams and all, all of them are fighting for same position so the, the percentual perce- percent mm. who are going to make it to the highest league is so so small because yeah. then you have the whole world wide world uh, where people uh, players can transfer from other countries yeah and it's in a way really uh, you need to have more maybe than maybe than focus and uh, gifts Mm. you maybe have to have luck also Mm. you maybe have to have the right uh, environment to grow up to become a a but what you're saying here maybe it's not so different for a startup actually that you know it's it's really one in maybe 10 or 100 that make it exactly um, and a little bit of luck is needed yeah, exactly and uh, then exceptional skill and yeah drive. and somehow trying to keep focus yeah. i mean sometimes a startup can come up on their legs in two years mm. one year i mean sometimes it takes 10 years mm. so <laughs> it's like uh, making a puzzle together and then just choosing the right uh, mm. strategies to get to some kind of product yeah that's interesting because uh, and you also say focus i think i read somewhere about startups they say it's a good advice for startups you know what you focus on grow mm. uh or what you focus on growth and i think that goes not only like if you want to make your business succeed you should focus entirely on it um but also focus on one particular thing within your startup um, you can't focus on all the areas, all the leads at once. Mm. Would you say it's the same in, in soccer? Uh, so you're a good player, but you focus on your one trait that sets you apart. Exactly. So I was here <laughs> thinking about this and it's a little bit crazy because if I think about myself and if anybody thinks about themselves as a football player, they you can categorize your skills. Like mm. I'm a fast guy or i'm a i have a really good stamina or i'm really skilled with the ball or i have really good crosses and uh, shoots so i mean this was what i was doing when i was a football player Mm. i was like trying to 
trying to categorize these different areas and mm. then try to just uh, guess, <laughs> I think, <laughs> okay. what is the best mix for me mm. to become a really interesting player. Mm. And uh, as the demand is so, there is so good uh, academies mm. in, in the world and uh, that are you know manufacturing players mm. in a way mm. so you you have to uh, be so good in uh, in a wide range of things mm. so you can't be bad at passing mm. you can't you have to have a really good first touch you have to be able maybe to dribble sometimes or at least take the ball upstairs mm. y- but you know what i'm uh, what i'm saying is that you need to have the base mm. and after that you can become really good and if you if you have the base and then you can also become really good at mm. at one at, particular, at one particular yeah. then you can shine okay so mm. so uh emil forsberg for example he he developed a really good shot mm. it's really interesting how he in a quite short amount of time did that but he also had a really good base mm. so he shot and then his skills to uh, to uh, go past the player. These mm. two things are what he's shining in. And then, of course, he has right, yeah, a base for other things. So it's hard to tell. Uh, and to he say. seems like an amazing, well-rounded player, right? He seems to have yeah, a solid yeah. base in, exactly. in most areas. And yeah, then yeah. And this is maybe a little bit of a hard thing because then then if we say like this we could say that let's focus on wha- something to become good but mm. i'm a strong believer in that you ha- still have to have the base mm. but for a startup maybe the base could be then that we have a awesome culture mm. i don't i don't know mm. maybe that is something that is a base for uh, you know and it's interesting i think i know what you're getting at that y- you can't excuse the language but suck uh, in any given general area that is needed to to form a successful company, but you could have maybe only one thing that sets you apart as your specialization. So I mean, if you run a startup, you can't flunk the customer relationships, or you know, you can't flunk uh, the payments with your customers, etc. It has to be on a certain level. Yeah. Maybe your marketing has to be on a certain level, but you have one unique product differentiation. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that could be a good um, analogy for it. Yeah. Mm. And and knowing what's out there. I mean, when playing like uh, in a junior team and never seeing what is the level of the best. Mm. I, I was like, I think I have two things in my football career, uh, like during my development time, where I got like a slap in the face. Hey, you're not that good that you thought think you are. One was when mm. I, I came... We went to uh, we uh, in a youth cup. We went to the finals, mm-hmm. and then we met. I think it was uh, a youth, a German youth team that was like uh, Frankfurt or something. The best team, mm-hmm. from one of the best youth teams from uh, Germany, and they bet us uh, like four one or something. But they were better in every particular part of the game. That mm. you know, when you're better at everything, that's li- like hard to. Mm. It's like w- <laughs> no I chance. You, mean, you yeah. don't have no. Ch- you haven't got any chance. Other similar game I had against the Toronto uh, Young Nationals hockey mm. game. I was playing also hockey <laughs> before before I then went for football. So we met the most probably legendary hockey youth team in Canada mm. the Toronto Young Nationals where Wayne Gretzky and Eric Lindros and these guys mm. came from and same thing there they were mm. like playing totally different hockey yeah. and also when we went to their training camp they were training totally different too mm. so we didn't even manage to to s- to do their trainings on the ice Oh really? They did was like that different, yeah. Yeah, I like uh, they got the puck. Uh, you you had like a some kind of a track you had to do. So you had to keep the puck, uh, skate backwards, do mm. sar- circles, go round cones, 
and still you had to keep the puck and we were looking like uh, amateurs i mean yeah. we were the best youth team in hockey at that time in finland and, and still we finland is yeah quite decent in hockey exactly room, so, and yeah. we were looking like uh, these guys haven't played <laughs> hockey for <laughs> many yeah. many yeah times i mean th- these two things were like when you get this reality check you really mm. need to yeah to check. think about your level yeah, yeah. yeah. and I what you mean and i think what's interesting because if you want to contradict everything we have said about running a startup we said you know you have that one unique specialization that's enough to set you apart i keep thinking about there's a quote from i can't remember his name is eric reed or something let's see if we can google him here he was the chairman of google uh the president for a long time maybe even ceo eric could it be schmidt yeah eric schmidt that's his name uh business leader for google and he said you need except exceptional talent on every level that's how you succeed so he said they built uh google's success and then we have the uh the phones on we need to turn them off next time um now he said you need exep- exceptional talent on every level to succeed as a company and that's really what set google apart not only today but already in the early days when they were yeah. a startup and they didn't really have the the resources or means he still said that they never um hired someone they didn't think was exceptional in their field interesting um and that created you know bottlenecks and really a lot of tough work for the the team that was already on board but despite you know having these demand these urgent needs for people they never hired someone they didn't think was exceptional yeah and that's really interesting yeah. so that's maybe another take on what we're talking about so it, it <laughs> it's either yeah. you can compete on one focus one specialization yeah uh, or you're just amazing in everything you do yeah yeah Mm. Absolutely, and and of course, if you if we say that, uh, yeah, the startup has an amazing setup for sales. Mm. Maybe they just collect enough customers to develop even further than another uh, startup that doesn't have sales but has everything else. I mean, mm. it's it's a little bit hard to tell uh, exactly what is the yeah. r- maybe no right w- mix, and it's always case to case situation. Exactly, you. I think that's a good point. You can't say that for every startup, every branch, every industry, uh, every industry, you, this is going to be applicable. Yeah. Um, Patrick, I think this was really fun. This was our first attempt at trying to uh, have some sort of interview. Uh, we're dabbling a little bit with the format, the technology, yeah. trying to set it up here. Yeah. It's going to be fun to see how this uh, turns out. Yeah. But it's been it's been a blast actually hearing about your past. Mm. I knew some of it. Maybe yeah. not all the details. Yeah. Not all the dirt. We apologize no, to no. football players. We're just kidding around here. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt left. There's a lot of dirt left. We <laughs> didn't bring that up. So be nice to us. Uh but thanks Patrick. It was a blast having you here. And um let's see if we turn this into a format where we have a running Walk Their Shoes uh podcast where we interview interesting people and, and hear their life. Thanks, stories. David. This was this was fun. Let's try. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Bye.